Hello. As most of you know, I like to show off Kintyre at its very best. And I would love to show off Gia, but I can't actually see Gia right now because the rain has been is pouring down right now and it's been pouring down all day and if truth be told for a few days but we need the rain and we need the sunshine we need the sunshine and we need the rain and today's theme of our service is going to tell you something about the fact that we need this wonderful wonderful gift of water to make this area and the whole of Scotland a very very lush and beautiful rich green place such as you can see all round about me. So welcome to this week's service of worship Church Beyond Walls from West Kintyre and the Isle of Gia. It's me! Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, and they will be yours for food. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Jesus spoke in all sorts of parables and told all sorts of stories. The parable of the sower, the parable of the weeds, and the parable of the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field and though it is the smallest of all seeds yet when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Well, can you see why we need all this rain, all this water? I've been inspired by all the trees outside the manse, back garden, front garden and indeed all around. And so this week I'm going to think a little bit about the trees and what they can teach us. Unfortunately, in my time here in West Kintyre and Gia, I've not really had the opportunity, or at least a great opportunity, to look at Achimor Gardens on the Isle of Gia, because mainly, of course, of lockdown. But I'm delighted to say that the gardens over in Gia have a new gardener, and she is going to introduce herself now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Achimor Gardens here on the beautiful island of Gia. My name's Bryony White, and I'm the new head gardener here. I started just before lockdown, so I've only been in post for a few months. Achimore was founded by Sir James Horlicks back in the 1940s. Sir James was on the hunt for the perfect location on the west coast in which to indulge his passion for rhododendrons. He was a really keen rhododendron collector and breeder. He named over 40 different hybrids and sent them around Britain and around the world in fact. In fact, behind me this pink rhododendron is one of his earliest hybrids. It's a variety called Oriole. And this particular plant is over 90 years old. 
We're sitting today in Sir James's first garden, literally the first compartment he dug out of the woodlands here. And the woodlands were why he decided that Ackermoor was the perfect place for his rhododendrons. The woodlands provide us with shelter and shade, structure and nutrition. They filter out all those damaging sea winds and the salt air, and they provide an absolutely perfect climate for Sir James's rhododendrons to flourish in. He set about carving out little compartments here, there and everywhere throughout the woodlands. It's a very unusual design, not common in most woodland gardens, but somehow it works here. Unfortunately, the gardens and the woodlands have been neglected for a few years now, so they're not looking as spectacular as they once did. But we're about to embark on a 10 year restoration project. And of course, the woodlands will be a very important part of that. Without these woodlands behind me, this garden simply couldn't exist. It would be exposed to the worst of the sea weather. It would be exposed to frost and other forms of damage. So the trees are really important to the existence of Ackermore. And as part of the restoration, we're planning to plant maybe 2,000 trees over the next few years in order to help and maintain our shelter belts and increase and continue their regeneration in terms of new plants. Anyway, I hope you can come and join us in Ackermore one day soon when lockdown is lifted. We're planning to reopen in the middle of July and we'd be love to see you. Thank you and have a good day. I'm so grateful to Bryony for introducing herself in this little video for us. I can't wait to meet her. I can't wait to get across the gear as the lockdown restrictions begin to lift little by little. So it'll be wonderful to see people travelling to Gia and to West Kintyre and taking in all the beauty of this area, not least the trees and the plants. Now, as I say, I really don't know very much about plant life at all, but I do know that the UK has a whole variety of trees from alders to ash, from cherry to chestnut, hawthorn to hazel, pine to poplar, willow to walnut. There's all sorts of varieties of tree and plant and hedge and bush. In the Bible too, there was a whole variety of trees as well. There were the myrtle trees, the cedar trees, the acacia, the palm, the oak. Do you remember the story of Zacchaeus? He climbed the sycamore. There was the story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem and people had taken off branches from the palm trees. The cedar tree was used in the temple building. The acacia tree was also used to build the box of the covenant. Olive trees too in Bible times were really, really important for crops, for, for all sorts of things from the berries to the oil to the wood used for making things. Of course, that is still the case today for many people and there's all sorts of controversy and heartache for many people who grow olive trees have had, had their lives ruined, really, by bulldozers coming in and taking over the land. That's not the subject of the theme of the service today. But certainly we will remember people in those such situations in our prayers. Now I would like us to think today a little bit about what trees can teach us. You see, back in Perthshire, where I was minister previously, there's an amazing tree, a yew tree, up in the parish of Fortingall. The Fortingall yew outside the church is much, much, much older than the church itself. In fact, the first recording I understand of the girth of the tree there was in 1769. 1769, there was an official measurement taken and the girth of the trunk of the yew tree was 52 feet. And that's because the Fortingall yew has been growing there for something in the region of two to three thousand years. Can you imagine what that tree has been through in that time? How many people have passed? 
what history has taken place all round about it. And indeed, the different seasons that that tree has had to endure. And how do we endure and find our resilience in the midst of all that we face in our short time on earth? You know, gardeners would tell you right now that gardens are an amazing blessing to us in this period of lockdown. And I know that not everyone listening or watching into this service will necessarily have a garden. And I think I've lost count of the number of people who have told me how much they feel for people who are in flats, living in tenements or in blocks of flats, high-rise flats, without access to the outdoors and to a garden. I feel personally incredibly blessed to have some of the trees and the plant life that you can see on the video screen now if you are watching rather than listening down a telephone line. There's so many lessons we can learn from the trees. The fact that every tree and every bush begins with the smallest of seed and given the right conditions that tiny small seed can grow and grow and grow into the biggest of bushes or trees. What does that tell us about our Christian faith? We only need faith, Jesus says, the size of a mustard seed. So if you're one of the people that haven't been coming to church over the last years but have been tuning into these services, maybe you're thinking, well, I've not got great faith. No excuse, my friend. It's the smallest of seeds that can grow and grow and grow. Trees, I think, also teach us about patience. It takes time to grow and develop. And sometimes, as human beings, we're far too impatient. Trees also teach us that we have to be rooted. When the storms come and the winds blow, if we're not rooted in something substantial then we can easily be toppled. And that's why Christian people try to root ourselves in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Not just making things up as we go along, but continually bedding ourselves in to that ancient traditional teaching, Christ, the great teacher. Trees also tell us that there's a season that changes. There will be the season right now when we have these amazing colours of olive and teal and mint and lime and emerald and jade, 50 shades of green. But the time will come when the colours will change into ambers and auburns and then the leaves will fall to the ground. There's a season for all things for us too. The trees teach us to shed the old and look for new life. They also teach us to seek nourishment, to seek hydration. Well, Jesus talks about being the living water and the bread of life. He talked about these two staples because he's teaching us that when we look to him, there we find our nourishment and our hydration for the soul. Be like the trees. Trees also are very generous. They allow the birds and animal life shelter. They grow their berries, their food, and they give it away. They also move with the wind and are flexible so that when the storms do come, they move with the, the flow of that wind as we are called to move with the flow of the Spirit. I am going to invite each person that is watching this video or listening to my words to learn from the trees, as Jesus taught us, to look at the world around us, to learn from them, to slow down, and to learn how we can be as solid and stable 
in the buffeting winds that come at us. This coronavirus has been a challenging time in so many ways. But I hope and I pray that through these services online and the lessons we're learning ourselves, each one of us, like the trees, might be growing through this season. And as we grow, may we produce fruit and in abundance. So friends, let's think about the trees and what they can teach us. The amazing beauty of the world around us that God has created. And as we think about those trees, we think and pray about ourselves and for others also. For those who need to grow. Those who have grown impatient, may they learn to be patient in you. To trust that you are the God who is with us always, no matter what. We pray too for those who have been buffeted and battered by the storms of life. Those who are tested because they are not rooted in a purpose or a cause bigger than themselves or in you. We pray too for people that need to be planted as if by a stream nourished and hydrated by the living waters that you can provide for the soul. Father, for everyone who feels dry and parched right now, we ask for your strength. We pray too, Lord God, for people in those ancient holy lands that have been so troubled for so many years as bulldozers do come and take away people's livelihoods and destroy the olive groves. O oh Lord, we pray for politicians and leaders that they would work in such ways that justice, that justice would prevail. May it be, Lord our God, that we too will be people of justice and that we too like the trees that grow and flourish and blossom and give of their fruit, we might give of what we have and share food and give shelter to those who need it most. And Lord Jesus Christ, who died upon that tree, that cross, may we, Lord, look to you always for your example, for your love, for your ministry and for your peace for ourselves and for all those you call us to serve. Hear then our prayer today, now, always. Amen. <laughs> the things, the things that I do for Church Beyond Walls. This is my fourth take of this song and this video and I have gathered a congregation that I do not really want to gather as I stand. At least the rain has gone off as I stand amongst the trees with the waterfall behind me at the man's garden. I've gathered a congregation of midges. So if you don't mind, without further ado, you shall go out with joy and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you there'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go 
out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall be forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. And the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go out with joy. I'm not doing another take. It got faster and faster there, not really because of the midges, but because it is fun to sing like that and to just enjoy our worship and to enjoy the beauty of all creation around us, even the midge. I don't know. I would like to thank Bryony, who's taken part in our service today, and again, of course, Tom, who does all our editing for us, to thank every single one of you for tuning in to our service of online worship. I hope that these services do minister to you and draw you closer to the God who has given all of us life. Learn from the trees and the creation that God has planted us within. And as you go, may you know the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit upon you and all those whom you love and all those whom you should love, this day and forevermore. Amen.